Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Nolo Pududu and this is the secret life of my PhD. Today I'm going to be talking about the reasons why I decided to register for a PhD. And this is motivated by a lot of the reading I've done on uh, becoming a successful PhD student. There's a study that was conducted in 2008 at the University of Otago in New Zealand. Uh, what researchers did is they uh, surveyed supervisors of PhD candidates and they asked them two questions. On the one end, they asked them, what are the most important attributes of a successful PhD candidate? And on the other end, they asked them, what are the most significant uh, shortcomings of students who do not succeed in their studies? And they listed about 10, they listed 10 each, they had to list 10 each. What is interesting in the final list, on both lists, motivation comes up on the one list a strong motivation a clear motivation for doing the phd comes up as very very important in terms of succeeding in your studies and on the shortcomings list a lack of motivation or the wrong motivation comes up as a reason for why candidates do not successfully complete their studies in fact um they they actually give some quotes from some of the supervisors and they say Often, students who are in school for the reasons other than a strong commitment to academic life, for example, if parents told them to do their studies or if they just do it for the sake of a job but not really having passion or desire to do the work, um, if they haven't got anything better to do or they just decided to go to grad school, often these kinds of students do not succeed. They have not set a clear goal. With that being said, I then decided I need to really articulate why I'm doing this PhD. So initially, it was just an automatic, I am in academia, I have to get a master's degree, and then I have to get a PhD because I work in academia. And that's all very well. That is some sort of motivation. But I wasn't really owning it for myself as in terms of what I wanted. It was more of a, it's an obligation for me because I work in academia. I mean, if I change my mind and decide not to work in academia, I don't have to pay, do a PhD. So my, I wasn't really attached to the concept of a PhD because the moment I changed my mind about academia, the PhD goes. I realized that I need to know why I'm doing it to the point where irrespective of whether I am in academia or not, I still want to do this PhD. This also forced me to really think about, do I really want a PhD? Maybe I want to leave academia and I don't want to stay. And I think going through this exercise made me realize that I sincerely really do want a PhD and I also do want to stay in academia and hence why I'm completing it. So I've got my top, my top 10. I say top 10 because I actually have other reasons. When I sat down and wrote the list, I actually came up with a lot more reasons and I was very happy for that. But I just want to share the 10 and I know that this list will vary. So, I mean, every few months I just look at it and think, okay, is this really why I want to do it? You know, does, does it still stand? But generally it's the same um, throughout, okay? So the first reason I want to be, uh, to do my PhD is related to work, okay? I want to become a professor. I want to become a full professor. And you cannot become a full professor without a PhD. So check, I want to become a full professor. That's an easy one. Number two, as part of uh, doing your research in academia, you get to share your work with other researchers and they get to critique and give opinions and, you know, just experiencing academic life with other researchers and you get to travel. I want to travel and I want to share my work with other researchers. I want to show other people just how smart I am. So that's number two. I want to be able to travel the world and share my research with um, other researchers. Number three is I want to supervise doctoral students. So I love teaching. I shared that with you in the previous week. I really, really love teaching. And I think there's levels to teaching. And, you know, in academia, in the formal institutions of education, supervising at doctoral level is like the highest level of teaching. And I really cannot wait to be able to do that. Also, just the journey that I'm going through and the struggles that I'm experiencing in my PhD, I can't wait to have students and, you know, help them through and say, okay, fine, we don't need to go through all of that, you know? So make things easier for them. We'll still have them working, but make things easier and make the journey more enjoyable for them. So that's number three. Number four, I just want to enjoy academia. You know, a PhD in academia is like, it's, it's like the, it's like an undergrad. It's like the entry, you know, once you get a PhD, 
then you're telling the academic world okay the academic community okay yes i'm ready to be a scholar i'm ready to start working it's not the end it's actually just the beginning and until you have a phd there's always this thing on the back of your uh, you know on your shoulder on your neck whatever that's like where's a phd where's a phd you know you can be a brilliant teacher you can push as much as you want but for as long as you don't have that phd in academia you are always missing something and i don't want to operate at that level so i definitely want to enjoy academic life and explore all of the opportunities available to me hence the phd number five this is a simple one it's a personal one emotional one i just want to make my family proud you know i've received the support of you know my entire family has been so supportive in my journey when i wanted to be a chartered accountant um you know when i did my master's they've just always been so supportive so it's not the only reason but i really just can't wait to tell them i did it guys we did it we did it we finally got the phd so yes that's also very important number six i want to write a scholarly book so there's various types of textbooks that you know uh students use in university in high school and uh academics write textbooks all the time but there's what is a scholarly book is actually a peer-reviewed textbook so there's a clear uh, significant contribution to knowledge and that's the book and 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 um then it can be used by students in in school so basically what you're doing is the research that you're conducting and the information that you gather and the knowledge that you create you then put that in it it becomes a textbook and students can use it and i think that is so relevant in terms of um teaching students knowledge that is at the forefront you know that is not 200 years old you know a lot of textbooks what what happens with a lot of the textbooks that we use is a, a a replication of knowledge that is already available so um and that's great i mean i wouldn't mind writing a book like that as well and i hope i, I can as well but i really really want to write a book a textbook that is a contribution to knowledge that students will use in classroom and um learn something new Number seven is I want to set up a PhD course on governance at our university. So um, we currently have um, a PhD course, but I'd like to set up a uh, similar to what they have internationally, almost like a taught PhD program and um, focusing specifically my research area now is uh, governance audit committees. So focusing on governance, I think it's so relevant in this day and age and we need to spend more time on it. So I would really like to do that as part of your as responsibilities working at the university. One of the things we need to do um, demonstrating that um, we're growing in our jobs is actually to create courses. And I think for me, creating uh, something within uh, 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 governance in, at the PhD level and having just an innovative program, I, that would really be exciting. So it's still very rough in my mind how it's going to look, uh, but I definitely want to do that. Number eight, this is very, very important. I want to have the letters PhD after my name. Yes, indeed. That is very important. Nala Pududu PhD is very, very important. It speaks to the ego. I want it badly. Okay. So that's a big motivation for me. And it will be Nala Pududu PhD. Now, when you, when you speak to me, you can say Dr. Pududu, Dr. Pududu. But when you write, I'd like you to write Nala Pududu PhD. Okay. All right. Great. Number nine. So I want to become an NRF rated researcher. So in academia, if you want to compare it like to being a musician or an actress or whatever, in academia, you have those kinds of accolades uh, such as the Oscars or the Grammys. And being an NRF rated researcher is pretty much one of those things. Um, uh, there's different levels of NRF rating, but that's really just saying you have... Um, contributed to knowledge you are recognized by your peers locally and internationally and um you know you are now nrf rated at a specific level and obviously to to be getting a phd doesn't make you get you nrf rating after the phd you then need to start publishing and publishing uh contributing to knowledge and uh becoming relevant in your specific field but the phd is that door like i said it's the entry into it i will not get nrf uh, rated 
without demonstrating that I'm able to be an independent researcher through my PhD. So that's important. And then lastly, this one is, this is literally the Oscar or the Grammy, the Lifetime Achievement Award, in my opinion, of academic life, of scholarly life. And that is to get an NRF Saatchi Chair. So the NRF Saatchi Chair is a chair of, it's, it's, it's along the lines of centers of excellence, where you are so well recognized in your career, in your career as an academic, and um, you set up research projects. And really what that is, is you get funding from the NRF, and that funding is to then pursue a specific research topic or field. You get to hire um, research assistants, but more importantly, you have master's students and you have PhD students, and you chair this project, this important project and it's usually an initiative between the NRF and maybe a government a, a government institution or or something like that so they currently I haven't seen any chairs within um, my field yet but I'm hoping they're waiting for me to get there so that they can release the call for the chair but we'll see but yeah that's something that would be like um, if I get this then I don't know but that's more of a maybe 10 year ago so that's really just like way way later you know and i think all these others are just building up to that so that is the alpha um yeah so those are my top 10 reasons for registering for a phd and at first when i did the list i thought i can't come up with 10 reasons honestly speaking 10 reasons no but I was so shocked that when I started writing, I was like, wait a minute, but this is what I want to do. Is this when I do it. And I came up with the reasons. And the reasons for someone else, will the list can look completely different for someone else. But this is what I decided is important for me. You'll notice that on my list, I don't have make more money, right? Initially, I had it and I removed it. And I realized, you know, once I pass, it's not going to make a difference to my salary. The money will come, but... I'm, what's very important to me right now is um, one, enjoying my career. Two, is making an impact. Making an impact. If I were to get the money without making an impact, I think I would have a sense of emptiness within me. So that's what's important to me. And I know if I do all these things, if I get these things right, eventually the money will come. I do want money. Everybody wants money. I want money. But yeah. Um, so that's my list and thank you so much. And um, I hope you also, if you're registered right now or studying something, I hope you've also spent time to articulate what what is the reason for registering? Why is it that you're doing what you're doing? It is so important. Besides motivating you, you know, you don't want to spend time wasting your time, whether it's three years, four years, five years, whatever, on a degree, not knowing why you're doing it or doing it because you can that is generally not such a good reason to do it unless you really have a lot of time on your hands anyway thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys next time thank you bye